I started out as a, um, an illustrator, doing cartoons and textbooks and things like that. Probably 12 years ago, I think. I, um, I'd been working in film. I did a lot of um, uh, creatures for movies. And I got to a point where I, I decided that I didn't really, I'd much rather be making my own stuff and exhibiting it in a way that was sort of controllable, really. And I had been exhibiting prior to that. I had had a few little shows. And I'd always been making work in the background. Like while I was working in film, I, I kept, um, you know, whenever I had some time off, I would, I would go back to the studio and make a, a new sculpture of my own. Went to what I really wanted to do, which was um, sculpting animals and puppets and things like that. I mean, the process usually goes, there's an initial drawing, some sketches, and then I'll go from there and do a marquette, like a small version of the final sculpture. And then um, once that's all resolved, and nice and clean and, um, and, uh, and works, then I'll go into the, the full-size piece in clay. But yeah, the initial drawing is, um, that's kind of where it all begins. I think really, I used to try and make things very quickly, like in a month and a half or something like that. But they seem now to take about the best part of three months, really. I think sometimes a simple sculpture that can seem really simple to make can wind up being really difficult. Usually they're referenced from someone I know, or, um, or often it's like a combination of a few different people. This one was um, a couple of different people. It was um, a friend of my mother's. She really was very kind and my mother took some photos of her and I used that as reference. She had a beautiful face. And the babies are generally from my own kids when they're about. I've got photos of them when they're babies. But yeah, some of them are literally a combination of a whole bunch of different people, not just like a made up face. But I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of issues with it. It's very, it's a very controlled process. So you have to kind of strangle it all the way through. And often that's not very free process. You're still doing things in a very technical way, but you don't want to be sort of just making representative, representative art, like a Madame Tussauds thing. You're trying to make something a little bit more interesting. I think that's why I've always changed the scale a little bit and always been happy to kind of throw in some other elements like um, animals or make it a little bit more surreal. I know some of the sculptures, like uh, people have had an emotional, like they'll see perhaps a family member or something like that in the work. And so, like with that Pieta is a good example. People would see it and see either a parent or a relative of theirs. That would sort of affect their interpretation of the work, which was nice to see actually because it, I had my own angle on it. At the moment I'm really enjoying sculpture because I feel like I've just gotten to a point where I've got the process very robust and it's very uh, clean and efficient. And I use this because it's so robust and it's so heat resistant and, um, and there's no shrinkage at all, which means that um, it's not kind of giving itself off over time, it's very stable. I think with my work I tend to um, include them and, but keep them the same, like um, with this particular work, having a baby and an older woman, um, it's really the same individual and so it's a nice way of kind of balancing it in a way and so it's not like a, um, a literal scene, it's sort of a bit more abstract. So I think that's probably one of the things that makes art very challenging because there's no instruction manual.